one of the popular items I turn out of my shop uh, fairly regularly are corbels that are mounted underneath the shelving to hide hide our uh, handguns. And so today I'm going to show you how to create a corbel that has an interior compartment that you can customize for your particular weapon. Now this one is set up for a uh, Ruger Mark series, like a Mark II, Mark IV. Um, but like I said, once the corbel is made, you can customize the interior to uh, to contain the gun of, of your choice. The other thing you have options for is how you want to hang this. Uh, it, it, it could be hinged. Uh, I actually added a couple pieces of aluminum here that slide into a slots of hint above that holds it in place and then there's a magnet that keeps it latched against the wall. Now another thing is if you're in a home uh, where children or others that you don't want to have authorized access to, you can also mount a cam lock into the top of the shelf. You can recess it down enough to where uh, the, the top of the lock barrel doesn't show, uh, basically flush with the desk or with the shelf. Um, but the cam lock will still lock your corbel in place, and then it would just be a matter of taking a key and unlocking or locking your corbel in place once it's in, uh, installed underneath the shelf. Um, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how we create this interior space, uh, and I'm going to do that on my shaper table. Now, if you have a router table, it's the same thing. We're going to use uh, the same technique. So what we are going to use for that is called a flush cutting router bit. And there's a bearing, it's either bearing below the bit or above the bit. We're going to use this three quarter inch flush cut bit. When that's mounted in my shaper table, I set the bearing height to ride along my template and the cutter will cut profile of the corbel that we want. And so we can do this repeatedly and we get the exact same profile for every piece and that means when we go to glue all this up together that there's very little sanding to do and the, and the corbel looks like it should. Now the other consideration is we need to have an interior space for our weapon and that requires a little extra work where we actually are going to create this cavity by using a couple extra pieces of spacers so that when we assemble our corbel we have our interior uh, cavity that we'll, our weapon will fit in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up my shaper table. I'm going to take my blanks and cut those out and then we'll, I'll show you how we actually shape these corbel pieces. Now I have a piece of oak here, it's a little more than 7 inches wide, about 3 feet long, and it will give me enough material when I lay this out to give me 6 of these pieces on this size corbel. That's enough for one and a half corbels. So we're going to end up with an inch and a half cavity uh, in, on the interior of this to, to create enough space for our, our handgun to be secured. Now I have jigs built up, basically sleds, that I can ride on my shaper table against this bearing and trim my corbel pieces. However, you don't need to get this fancy if you don't want to. If you start with your guide piece, you can use double-edged sticky tape and put your pieces there and then use that on your shaper table or your router table. I prefer to have my edges securely secured. I know that everything is indexed and it won't move just a little bit as I'm machining it. But again, you can use sticky tape and you don't need to get this complicated into, into developing your sled. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut my blanks out and then we'll be ready to mount them into the sleds and actually shape the profiles on these. Now one thing to be 
keep in mind is when you do cut your rough shapes out, leave them a little bit proud of your template so that the bearing actually has, or the cutter actually has some material to remove down flush with your template. So I try to leave a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. I try not to leave too much so that the cutter doesn't work too hard. Um, especially if you're using a router table where the horsepower tends to be a little less for driving these bits. So keep close to the line uh, so you don't have a bunch of material to remove when you're doing your machining and you'll be happy with the results. Now I actually have two sleds here. This one cuts basically the corbel profile. And we're going to cut four of those pieces. But then we need to cut the profile for the interior where we space it so that we have room to insert our, our gun into the cavity. And the way I do that is with another sled that once we'll attach this corbel and we'll actually trim this down and then this sled again runs across my shaper table and it gives me my little ribbon piece of material that I can glue up and get my interior cavity. So I'm going to set up my shaper table now and cut these pieces out and then go from there. Well, I've got my four blanks cut. Uh, we'll work with the miter saw to square up the ends, band saw to cut my profiles, and I have mounted my first corbel piece in the sled. And on my particular jig, I use three screws just to hold my blank in place so that I know it's secure, it indexes, and all of them will be indexed identically. And so when we go to put them all together, this profile will be very smooth. There will be very little sanding that has to be done to the exterior of this corbel to make it look nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this to the shaper table. Uh, we'll run it through the shaper, flush this down. I'll do it with the other three pieces. And then we'll continue on with how we're going to create the cavity inside our corbel for our handgun. Four profile pieces cut. You can see them here. What's really nice is once you line them up, they're all identical in profile, and so there's very little sanding to do once this is all assembled. But now we have to create the cavity inside. And what that means is with these two interior pieces, all we want is a little strip of this, and we want to remove the rest of this material. And so I have another jig that'll go on my shaper table. And it's built to index this blank. And you can see the profile on the other side that we're going to cut following that bearing. So what I'll do is with each one of these two pieces, I'll scribe this. I'll remove the excess material from the bandsaw. Then I'll secure this piece into my sled. And I'll secure it with one screw here that will hold the top of it and then from the back side I put another screw in. Now we're not worried about screw holes in this because it's all getting glued together it's all going to disappear. But we do need to hold it steady so that we can keep good pressure against the bearing and get that profile cut smooth. Now if you didn't want to go through the hassle of building this jig to cut these interior guides you could always just grab this, cut it on your back saw and put two of them together. All you're going to end up with is a little less smooth interior surface and it's not a big deal because it doesn't show. Myself, I like to have it smooth and that way when I lay uh, foam on that interior compartment, uh, it gives me a nice flat surface to apply glue to and then put that foam down. But like I said, if you don't want to go to the hassle of making this interior cut the same on all the pieces, then just scrape it with a pencil on your, and then cut your piece. So what I'll do now is I'll take these two blanks. I'll go ahead and I'll cut off the excess material. I'll run them on my shaper table and we'll show you how all this gets assembled. At this 
point we have all our pieces shaped from the shaper table and using our sleds uh, and you can see this piece how it cuts that interior profile. Now at this point you can take each half and you can actually glue these interior spacers into place, one on each half. And the reason we don't want to build up here, uh, we can't. But before we put the other side on, you want to figure out how you want to hang this from underneath the shelf. Now if we look at this corbel, along the top of it I put some aluminum strips and they just ride in a block under here in, in the dados to secure that underneath. If we want the same thing but we don't want to put this decoration around the top, I use a uh, Use some angle iron um, or some angle aluminum, and what that can be done is it can be cut and secured to the top of the inside of your corbel, and that gives you this little uh, ledge of metal where you can create your block that's underneath your shelf uh, that this piece of, of angle aluminum will slide in, and it also gives you the ability to figure out if you want a locking mechanism or if you want magnets in there, where to place them, how to place them, etc. Well, I apologize. I started editing this video last night and I didn't like the ending of it. And so I came out this morning, I set everything back up and uh, we'll complete this project uh, so you can actually see uh, um, how to make a fully functional uh, gun concealment corbel. So yesterday I mentioned we want to attach our two interior spacer pieces, glue them into position. When I glue these in position, I'll apply my glue, I'll set these in position, make everything sure it's flush, and I let it set for a couple minutes before I put the clamps on it, and that makes it so it tends uh, not to slide around, and I, I, I keep the alignment I want. Once those were glued up, and I did that to both halves, I did take, uh, I decided to use the angle aluminum, to hang this from the underside of a shelf. And so this is half inch by half inch angle aluminum, 16th inch thick. I just countersunk two holes in each one and mounted them down 3 eighths of an inch from the top of the corbel. From there it was, I could see what my interior width is and it was just about 1 and 9 sixteenths inch uh, uh, width on the interior. Then I cut a block of wood that fits that cavity and then put two dados about three eighths of an inch down that the aluminum will slide into and then I had to relief a little bit of the underside to clear the aluminum on uh, the down part of the, of the angle aluminum so we end up with kind of what looks like a T-block. Now it's this block that gets mounted to the underside of the shelf so that your corbel has something to hang on. Now the other thing I've done is I was digging through my miscellaneous parts box and I did find a barrel latch that actually fit this very narrow profile in here and that's going to allow me to secure this part of the latch inside my cavity and when the corbel is slid into position it will latch and latch securely in place. I mentioned we don't want to glue these halves together because being able to take it apart in half it lets me look at the, at the geometry and the placement of my components and it also gives me an idea of where my latch needs to be mounted once it's inside and since this has a single screw right in the center that screw is going to go through our glue seam here and so that can't be added until we've already glued up this corbel but I was able to mark the center line of the barrels so that once this is together I know where to put that screw in my uh, on the inside of my corbel to hold this part of the latch so what I'll do now is I'm going to glue these two pieces up, uh, cure this part of the latch, do a little cleanup on the corbel, and then 
then we'll finish this up. I think we're done with uh, what we wanted to do today. Um, what I did to finish this up was, once I let the glue cure, I made sure this profile was smooth, or this side of the, the corbel that goes against the wall was smooth. Um, I did the light sanding here on the front of the corbel, and all those profiles matched up beautifully. I did relieve the edge on the corbel with a quarter inch round over bit on the shaper table. And then the last thing I did with my latch mechanism um, is I cut it just a little bit shy of the back of the corbel so that the corbel itself will uh, fit snugly against the wall when this snaps into place. Um, the other thing I did was I wanted this block that mounts on the underside of the shelf just a little bit proud of the top of the corbel so that this doesn't hit the underside of the shelf and bind when you're trying to get it up. Now that barrel latch is actually quite stiff and it locks it very securely in place. And so once this corbel is mounted, it's not just going to be removed very easily. You're going to have to go ahead and give it a give it a pull to get it to come off. You can see we've got a nice interior cavity for like a concealed carry size gun or a smaller semi maybe. Um, and it's basically ready to be mounted under the shelf of your choice. So I hope this inspires you to get out of the shop and make some things, maybe even corbels for yourself if you want to hide your guns in plain sight. From Las Vegas, I'm Alex. Take care.